Hey, it's Tammy with Collar Valley Cooks. I hope y'all had a blessed day today. It did not snow like the weatherman said, so I did chores all day. Mostly did paperwork, um, and so it took me most of the day to finish it. Me and Chris have had a good day, though, and I hope you have, too. Um, I wasn't that disappointed that we didn't get snow because it's not something I really enjoy that much anyway. Um, I mean, I think it's pretty, but I like it when it snows and it's pretty, but it doesn't stick to the roads. And that way, you can actually ride around and see the beauty of it. Um, I'm a little late tonight. Y'all just remember that I'll probably be on any time from 6.30 to 7 because, you know, it is kind of like supper time. So sometimes I get... Uh, busy or I get a late start with supper and it takes a few minutes to get on here. Uh, See, so y'all just keep that in mind. Tonight, um, we're reading January the 29th. I've read both of the Bible studies in the books and um, they're both very different and good. Um, the one from Charles Stanley is talking about um, waiting for his guidance and he talks about um, us having trials or problems in our life and how we're supposed to uh, give them to God and not worry about them and know that um, no matter what happens, there's going to something good will come out of them. So um, I'm going to read you this. We'll read the psalm after we get finished. It's Psalm 32. Um, it says, perhaps you don't know what to do today. There is a problem that consumes your mind, but you cannot see a clear way forward. If you do not know what to do, the only thing you can do is seek God and wait to see what he will reveal to you. That is what having patience means. It doesn't mean you sit and you do nothing, but rather that you persevere by actively anticipating that the Lord will respond on your behalf. However, to wait in an effective manner, you should answer some important questions about your heart. That is, do you believe that God is indeed all-powerful, all-wise, and ultimately good and loving towards you? Do you trust that when you ask the Lord for wisdom, he reveals it to you willingly? You can read about that in James chapter 1. And do you have confidence that even if you cannot see the benefit in a trial, that your loving Heavenly Father will eventually bring good from it? You can read about that in Romans chapter 8 verse 28. If so, then what do you have to fear? Rest in the fact that God will show you what to do when the time is right. And uh, so many of us worry about a lot of things, and um, he's right. We should depend on the Father, and we should trust in the Father, and know that he's got our best interest at heart. And in knowing that, if we truly believe and we're truly a Christian like we say we are, then we should truly be able to give it to him and stop worrying and trust him that no matter what happens, it's for our good. Um, and y'all remember that sometimes I tell y'all that we're not the only person down here on this earth for him to uh, look after. And I know that he loves us individually and he knows us individually, but he also has the world as a whole to uh, take care of. So remember that and don't be selfish, you know, and think that your problems are, you know, more important than everything and that you know more than God does. Because we don't. We don't know more than God. And we should trust him uh, with our lives and tell him that we do. Um, that psalm is Psalm 32. I'm going to look it up. I was looking. In, I w I've been reading in John, you know, this week in general. And, um... I was in chapter 16 today, and that's where, um, that is where, um, Jesus is telling the disciples, he tells them that he's about to go away and prepare a place from them. You know, he, and he says, if it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. In my father's house, there are many mansions. That, you know, y'all know that. Well, um, he also tells them several times in these chapters these few chapters of John that him and his father are one and that he would ask the father on our behalf if we would if we had something he tells us to ask for stuff 
that's something I've always been kind of funny about doing because I feel like I'm being selfish when I do. But he tells us to ask, um, and his father would give it to us. Uh, and he would ask the father, and then he goes on in the later part of that chapter, in chapter 16, and instead of saying, you ask me and I'll ask the father, he says, you ask me and I don't have to ask the father. So it kind of changes, and he says, because the father loves you because you've loved me. So he's trying to show us and show the disciples in this chapter that um, he is God and that he and the father are one. And that um, he says that he tells us these things, and he tells us about the word. He tells us to uh, heed his commandments so that we may have joy. Now, um, I told y'all about this listening app that I have, where I just come in here and I play it instead of reading. And I seem to get a lot more out of it. I think it's because it's like God's just talking directly to me. And I'm not having to so much worry about reading the part. And I don't know, it just it just resonates with my spirit good. And um, so if you haven't tried to check it out, just take out a few minutes of your day, go into your bedroom, shut the door, and play the audio app. It is just wonderful. Um, and I've gotten a lot out of it this week doing that. Ever since I had that migraine and I decided to use that app, it's been a true blessing because I'm gonna start using. I'm just gonna use it all the time. Um, but he also talks about us, him being the true vine. There's just so many good things about reading the Bible, and so many things that is full of hope, and so many things that teaches you how much he really does love us. Um, it's so encouraging. And gives us such joy, just like he says it does in his word. And his word gives us joy. And um, and if you don't believe it, just try. Just try listening to it for a while and just see how you feel. Because it does make us feel better. It says, these things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you. And that your joy may be full. Or might be full. He doesn't say your joy is going to be full. He lets you know that if you're listening to him and you're reading and you follow him, then your joy might be full, he says. And then he says, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So he's letting us know that he loved us so much that he laid his life down for us. It's just a beautiful book. John is just a beautiful book. Um... But anyway, I told y'all I'd read y'all this psalm. Let's look it up. Psalms 32. And I gotta find it. This is Chris's Bible. It's thick. All of them are different, you know. As far as, you know, where to find stuff. 32. Psalm 32, confession and forgiveness is the name of this chapter that he's given us to, to go with waiting for his guidance. So um, if you do have a problem in your life and you're having a hard time, um, remember that he's telling us to wait on God's guidance. So let's read this psalm and see what he has to say to us. He says, um, it's a psalm of David. Um, it says, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Selah. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Selah. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely, surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Selah. 
I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held with a bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass about him. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, and ye that are upright in heart. Do you know that is the exact same psalm that we studied this Sunday in Sunday school? Isn't that something? You think this Bible is such a huge book, and you could get lost in it? When lots of times God just puts it right where it's supposed to be. Look, we just read that psalm for real, and it was the exact same thought, psalm that we studied in Sunday School Sunday. And I was even thinking, I'd like to read that to my girls. And God just worked it out. Just worked it out. And I didn't even have to go back and try to take us off of, um, you know, our book, out of our book or anything. He let me read it anyway. Isn't that cool? Next week in Sunday School, we're going to be talking about Psalm 33. And I was doing a psalm, actually. For a little while on this Bible study until I bought these books. Um, it's nice to read a psalm. And the guy that's teaching our uh, Sunday school class, his name is Stan Pittman. He was telling us that, um, you know, many people say that it's nice to read a psalm before you go to bed. And to read a proverb when you get up. Because proverbs kind of teaching you how to act and what you should or shouldn't do. And, the, and then the psalm is kind of like the praise and worship side for w before you lay down for bed. So... Um, I thought that was a neat thing for him to say. I hope y'all had a blessed day. I hope that you enjoyed the psalm. Um, I mean, there's another promise of hope. You know, I was talking about, I mean, just everything that we've read tonight, just the few little things that we've read tonight are full of golden nuggets about how God loves us, about how he gives us joy, about how we can depend on him, how... Um, if we follow him, if we read his word, he's going to guide us. I mean, it's just packed full of promises and love. And, and I know it's our nature to ignore it because we're, we live in the flesh. But if we could so just get a grip of how wonderful it is, it would make us have more joy during the day. Um, so anyway, I didn't cook anything today. I was lazy all day long. I ate cereal. Let's see, what did I eat for breakfast? Chris made cinnamon toast with scrambled eggs while I was working for lunch. Y'all, I can't remember what I had for lunch. I'm getting so old. Well, for supper, we had that good roast beef that I made. I think it was Sunday. Um, we had a sandwich. Oh, it was so good, and we ate it with Fritos. Delicious. So um, we posted uh, a new post on um, CVC on YouTube about the new air fryer that I reviewed and the uh, cherry turnovers, and they were really, really good. I ought to go in there and make me a few right now because they're so easy. I get to, all you got to do is buy some refrigerated phyllo dough, throw some filling in it, throw them in the um, oven, and you got you a delicious dessert pretty quick. Um, hey, Linda. We got Linda here tonight, and Debbie Jewell, Kay, Marilyn, Angie, Pat Patricia, and Janet. I'm glad you're all with me and that I'm not all alone tonight. And I was telling my cousin that we do Charles Stanley, because she was telling me she reads Charles Stanley every day. Um, and I told her about this book we're looking at. So um, I hope y'all have a blessed night. Let's say our prayers, okay? And we will see you tomorrow talking about the Bible study for January the 30th. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your word. We thank you for your many blessings. And more than anything, we praise you for sending us your son, Jesus Christ, who in fact is you and the word of God, as you say in 1 John 1, 1, um, in the beginning was God. And the word was God, and the word was with God. So we know that Jesus Christ was there in the beginning when you created the world. And we know that you and Jesus are one with the Holy Spirit.
And we thank you for your promises and your commandments and your judgment. Because without your judgment, Lord, we would be in sin. And um, without your son, Jesus Christ, we would be lost. Um, and we would be still having our father of the world, uh, the devil, as our as our father. It's so much better to have you as a father than um, Satan. Um, I hope you bless each and every one of us as we go throughout the rest of our evening. I hope we do keep our minds on you some during the day. And I pray that each and every woman and man who listens to this Bible study will take the time out to read your beautiful, wonderful promises, commandments, and judgments. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Bye, y'all.